Hello, Namaste everyone. Uh, let me welcome you all in this session. In today's session, we are dealing with one of the grammar topics that is voice. Under voice, we will be talking about uh, two types of voices. Uh, they are active voice and passive voice. Uh, you can see this in the figure over here. Yes, we have uh, mainly two types of voices. They are active voice and passive voice. Okay, uh, first of all, we'll see some examples. Uh, then, after analyzing the examples, we'll generalize the rules ourselves, right? Okay, let's see some examples first. Okay, we have uh, as many as three examples over here. Uh, let's see the first one. Rupak repairs mobile phones. It is in active form. And you can simply change this into passive voice as mobile phones are repaired by Rupak. Next example, they invited me for the party. It is in active form. Now you can change this into passive as I was invited for the party. Number C, someone is calling you. You are being called. Yes. Now from the above examples, uh, you can notice there uh, or you can generalize that an active voice is nothing but a form of verb used to show an action or the action performed by the subject or doer. In active voice, the subject is dominant. You can see in the above example, Rupak, yes, you can see Rupak, it is subject, repairs, verb, mobile phones, object, right? It follows a subject, verb and object pattern, right? And in active voice, uh, the verb, the form of the verb we have used in active voice it denotes or it shows the action performed by the subject or doer. Similarly, in passive voice, okay, what is passive voice? Uh, it is a form of verb used to show the effect of an action upon the subject or doer. Right? Active voice shows the action performed by the subject or doer, but in passive voice, the subject is affected by the action, right, performed by the subject. Here it shows the passive voice shows the effect of an action upon the subject or the doer. This is what we learn or what we can generalize from the above examples. Now, how to change an active voice into passive? Let's see some examples for this. Number A, Kabir prepares tea. Now you can change this sentence into passive as tea is prepared by Kavir. Number B, mother is cooking food. And you can change this into passive as food is being cooked by mother. Similarly, number C, they have lost the match. You can change this into passive as the match has been lost. In the same way, number D, Ganesh wrote a poem. Now we can change into passive as a poem was written by Ganesh. Now from the above examples, what you can notice or generalize is that first of all, okay, before you change an active voice into passive, you have to identify the subject, verb, and the object. Then it will be easier for you to change an active voice into passive very easily, right? So then after you identify the subject, verb, and the object, in the given sentence, then you need to change the object into the place of a subject, right? So, this is what we have done in the above examples, you can notice there. Similarly, uh, in the next step, uh, you have to use suitable be verbs, right? If the active voice is in present tense, right? You have to notice whether uh, the active voice is in present tense or past tense or in future tense. So, whenever an active voice is in present tense, you have to use suitable be verbs is, am, or are, right, according to the subject. And next point, if the active voice is in past tense, that is verb 2, you have to use past be verbs. I mean, was or were, right? So, if the active voice is in past tense, you have to use past be verbs, right, while changing into passive voice. 
Then next point, uh, use the past participle form, that is verb 3, uh, in your words, you have to use past participle form of the main verb given in the active voice. Next, change the subject of the active voice into the place of object, if necessary, right? Sometimes, okay, you may not have to change uh, or mention the subject of the active voice into passive, so uh, it may be optional for you. And next point we have, uh, if the active voice uh, contains have verbs or modal verbs, have verbs here indicates have, has or had. And modal verbs like okay, will, would, shall, should, can, could, may, might, etc. Use the same verb in passive according to the subject, right? In case of have verbs or modal verbs, you have to use the same verbs according to the subject in the passive form. Okay, these are the points and these points will help you uh, to change active voice into passive, right? Let's see next. Okay, I have provided you here uh, the chart. Okay, you can see this chart uh, uh, according to the tense, right? I have provided you how to change an active voice, okay, in different tenses into passive. Yes, uh, you can notice the structures and you have to change the active voice into passive accordingly, right? Okay. Now, uh, you can see here, if there are modal verbs like can, may, might, could, must, have to, has to in the active voice, then you can simply change them into passive as uh, can be plus verb 3, you have to add be, right? Be, -E be. And you should always use past passive form in the passive form, pa passive voice, right? So this is very common for you. May, maybe plus verb 3, might, might be, could, could be. Must, must, must be, have to, have to be, has to, has to be, yes, in the same way. Now, next point, indefinite or vague or plural nouns, pronouns like someone, somebody, everyone, everybody, no one, nobody, people, they, etc. are not mentioned in the passive voice, right? So, you have to notice if there is an indefinite pronoun or vague pronoun, as uh, sorry in the subject of the active voice let's see some examples for this number a we have somebody helps you this is in active form now you can change this uh, into passive as you are helped yes you do not have to mention by somebody if you mention you will be wrong so such uh, indefinite or vague pronouns should not be mentioned in the passive now number b nobody knows me Yes, here also you can see we have nobody in the subject of the active voice. So, this is not mentioned in the passive. So, you can change this into passive as I am not none. Number C, people are polluting the environment. Yes, here we have the subject people. So, it is not mentioned in the passive voice, right? You can change it into passive as the environment is being polluted. We have not mentioned by people, right? So, uh, it is not considered good to be mentioned in the past voice. Are you clear? Yes. Now, how to change questions into passive voice? Yes, so we learned how to change the statements uh, just before. Now, we will be, okay, uh, seeing some examples on how to change questions into passive voice. Right? Sometimes we may be given questions in the active voice. So, how to send them into passive. Let's see some examples first. Number A, we have, what do you want? It is in question form, right? WS question we have. So, when the active voice is in question form, the passive voice should also be in the same form or question form. So, you can simply change this sentence into passive as, what is wanted by you? Yes, you, by you, it is optional. Number B, how do you solve the problem? Let me repeat this once again. How did you solve the problem? It is in past tense. So you can change this into passive as How was the problem solved? How was the problem solved? Number C. Is anyone using the room? Now you can change this into passive as Is the room being used? Number D. Who wrote this poem? 
you can simply change this as by whom was this poem written yes now I have provided you some points uh, under notes you can go through these points which uh, may help you get the ideas on how to change questions into passive voice let's see the first point we have if the active voice is in question form the passive voice should also be in the same form yes we have already discussed this and you can notice this in the above examples as well second point we have if the active voice contains do halves right do or does replace it do does or did right we call it call them as two verbs replace it with is am are whichever is suitable right if there is do or does in active sentence you have to replace them with is am or are in the same way next point if the active voice contains did replace it with was a verb right because did is past tense, so you have to replace did with past be verbs, was a verb. In the same way, you can see the next point, make other changes as required. Yes, you may have to change okay, uh, other words okay, uh, as in other types of sentences. So, you can change them okay, according to the need. How to change imperative sentence into passive? Yes. Sometimes we may be provided with imperative sentence, right? Uh, that may be an order, a request, or a command sentence. So, let's see the examples first and we'll discuss more about this. In number A, we have the sentence, pass me that newspaper. Now, this is in imperative form, right? This is a simple order or command. So, you can uh, change this into passive as, let that news let that newspaper be passed to me. Yes. Number B. Don't help him. It is a negative command. Right? So, you can change this as Let him not be helped. Or, you can also uh, change into passive as He should not be helped. Yes? Number C. Don't smoke cigarettes. This is also a negative command. Right? So, you can simply change into passive as let cigarettes not be smoked or cigarettes should not be smoked number d please help me it is a request so in case of request you can simply change into passive as you are requested to help me you are requested to help me now what if we can uh, generalize from the above examples yes i have provided you some notes here yes as the generalizations Let's see the first point. Uh, for positive command, use the structure let plus object plus b plus above 3 or past participle form or subject plus should be or should not be, right? If we have positive command in active voice, then you can use should be plus above 3 or if we have negative command, should not be plus above 3 in passive. Yes, uh, number next point. For negative command, that begins with don't. Right? When the active sentence contains negative command beginning with don't, then you can use the structure let plus object plus not plus b plus above 3 or past participle form. Or you can see the next structure as uh, subject plus should not plus b plus above 3 or past participle form for the negative command. Right? And the last point we have for request. Sometimes we may have a request. So, in case of a request in the active sentence or active voice that begins with the words like please, kindly, etc. You, you have to use the structure you are requested to plus bar one. You are requested to plus bar one structure. Did you get the idea? Yes. Right? Now, we have another type of, okay, passive voice or passivization. Uh, I mean, how to change the passive of hearsay. Sometimes, uh, we may have hearsay or let's say a report, right? Or a kind of information uh, heard by someone else about a person or some other people. So, in such case, how to change the active voice into passive or how to make 
the passive of such sentence. I mean here saying, right? Let's see the examples here. Number A, people say he is a thief. Now you can change this into passive as it is said that he is a thief or he is said to be a thief. You can make the passive of uh, such sentence or into two ways, right? Yes, you can notice this in the examples over here. Number B, they believe the PM is going to resign soon. Now you can make the passive of this sentence as it is believed that the PM is going to resign soon. Or you can uh, make the passive in another way as the PM is believed to be going to resign soon. Yes, this is the way how you can change the active sentence into passive. Now uh, I have provided you some notes okay, uh, about such sentences, how to change active voice of hearsay into passive. Okay, let's see the first point. When the active voice uh, contains the words of hearsay like say, think, believe, estimate, report, consider, understand, assume, find, claim, agree, know, etc., then you can change them into passive as in two ways, right? Okay, uh, I have provided you the structures over here. Yes, we have already discussed in the examples as well. Uh, let's see the instructions. Number A, yes, it is plus verb 3. You can use past participle form. For example, it is said, it is believed, it is thought, that. Yes, like this. It is plus past participle form of the verb given in the active voice. Yes, plus that plus remaining clause. Yes, you can see the above example for this. And number B also the same. You can notice this. And okay, for more information or for your ease, I have uh, given you some more words uh, there. You can simply uh, notice, for example, people say. You can change the word say as it is said that. Similarly, people believe is changed, it is believed that. The estimate is changed as it is estimated that. The report is changed as it is reported that. The claim is changed as it is claimed that, and so on and so forth. Yes, after that you can use the remaining clause. Did you get my point? Yes, right. Okay, now here I have uh, some practice questions for you. Uh, you have to change uh, the given sentences into passive. Okay, I hope you will do this on your own. And if you have any problem, yes, we'll be there to help you. Okay, thank you very much. This must be.